Hello everybody and welcome back. I thought I'd say hello to you whilst I'm in the middle of doing some gardening. Now every Friday we cook something for you, a really thrifty and frugal recipe. Now if you're here for the very first time, I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera, early retirees, we're British, debt and mortgage free, and we live a very simple and thrifty and frugal life here in France. So let's take a look at what we're going to cook for you this week. Now this week I did something a bit unusual is I cooked something for the first time ever. Now I have never made moussaka before because I've eaten aubergines a couple of times and this has been my reaction to aubergines. Uh, I didn't see the fuss about them. But anyway, I thought I'd make moussaka with an aubergine in it and it was really, really lovely. I also followed the authentic recipe that used olive oil. Oh my goodness, I used about a quarter of a bottle of olive oil and at six and a half euros a bottle, I won't be doing that again. Now you see me frying the potatoes, frying the aubergine as the recipe told me to do so. But the next time I did it, I baked my potatoes in the oven in their slices, covering them with a brush of oil and I dry fried the aubergine. So I literally just put them in a hot pan and seared them and they came out really, really well. But today you'll see me frying it. Like I said, I won't be doing that again. The olive oil is just too expensive. As much as as yummy as it was, it's also a bit calorific, isn't it? But hey, here I am today for you making my moussaka. Right then, let's talk through my ingredients for moussaka. Moussaka is a lovely dish, it's just three layers. It's vegetables at the bottom, a very thin layer of meat, and a layer of bechamel sauce on top, or bechamel sauce with the addition of cheese. Now, my moussaka is a bit different. I'm only gonna be using 400 grams of meat. That's 14 ounces of meat, which is under a pound. I'm gonna be using about three quarters of a tin of tomatoes, an onion. I'm not putting cinnamon or anything like that in it. I don't like it. I'm gonna be adding a tiny bit of cumin and some garlic powder, and that's my meat layer. For my vegetable layer, it's usually potatoes on the bottom and then aubergines. Well, aubergines are more expensive than courgettes. So what you can do is completely switch this out for courgettes. I say courgette because I'm European. If you were Italian or American, you would say zucchini. And we call this an aubergine and you would call this an eggplant. And this is quite a large one. But I didn't buy two aubergines because they are expensive. This one alone was one euro. So I could use more potatoes. I am going to lightly fry these and layer them in the pan. Potatoes, aubergines and then courgette. And then I'm going to make and put on top of this my bechamel sauce. And normally the recipe said two cupfuls of Parmesan. Well, I've got 100 grams, which is about half a cup. So I'm way under. I'm going to sprinkle on top some French grated Emmental cheese. That's it, I'm gonna put that on top. And I will take some of the bechamel sauce and mix it through to make the meat sauce quite creamy. So there's talking through my ingredients. I'm gonna fry my vegetables um, because I don't wanna switch the oven on. But if you wanted to, you can put them on baking trays, brush them with oil, um, bake them. But I'm not gonna do that. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep up everything in readiness to cook it. So I've sliced my aubergines and I have sprinkled both sides with salt and I'm going to set that aside in a colander 
and leave it by my sink whilst I prepare everything else. After I've done that and I've prepared everything else, I will wipe the salt off with a kitchen towel and I always salt my aubergines because it removes any possible bitterness. So they're going to go to one side whilst I prepare everything else. So there is everything ready. Let me go through my ingredients in more details. I have 50 grams of butter, which is about a quarter of a cup. I have 60 grams of gluten-free corn flour, which is about half a cup. I have 100 grams of Parmesan, or I have Grana Padano, actually, which is a cheaper but hard Italian cheese. And I'm gonna add two eggs to this as well because I want this bechamel sauce on top to be like a thick set custard layer. I prepared my vegetables and everything's ready now. So now I'm gonna get cooking. the potatoes and put them in the bottom and then I seasoned them with salt and pepper. Next I have done exactly the same with the sliced aubergines and seasoned them with salt and pepper and here's where I am adapting my recipe. If I had a deeper dish, which I don't have a deeper dish, I would now do a layer of courgettes. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to put these in a ziplock bag, put them in the fridge and I'll eat them with a meal another day. So I've decided to go against those. But if you had a deeper dish than me, you could obviously have three vegetable layers there. And uh, the aubergines are amazing. They kind of soak up all the oil and then they sort of take on all that taste. And they are really, really nice. I've never done like this before. So I've never made me cycle before, but this is looking really interesting. What a great looking vegetable that is. Next, I'm gonna make my meat layer, but I'm not gonna add it to the vegetables just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make my meat layer. I hope you can hear me over the sizzling. When you're browning your meat, keep cooking it, keep cooking it. You actually want to brown it. It will have loads more taste. I'm really impressed with this uh, Value Supermarket frozen beef. There's hardly any fat in there. It's only 15% fat. It turned out to be really, really good. I'm, I'm impressed with that. But even that little tiny bit of beef there was four euros. Just the beef. Things are so expensive. I'm going to keep browning. Then I'll add my spices. Then I'll add half my tin of tomatoes.
There is my bechamel sauce and you saw me add a sprinkle of black pepper, a sprinkle of salt and a sprinkle of ground nutmeg. I have my two beaten eggs. What I'm going to do is let this cool for a few minutes. For a few minutes, I'll take it off the heat. I will then add a little bit of this to my eggs and whisk that together. I don't want to add this to this, it's too hot and it will just turn the eggs into scrambled eggs. So I'll do that in a few minutes. Like I said, I'll keep stirring this and I'll let it cool down. But in the meantime, I have got my 100 grams of hard Italian cheese. The recipe says Parmesan, but let's face it, Grana Padano. Grana Padano is cheaper. It's a good hard Italian cheese. I'm gonna stir that all in. And like I said at the end, I'll add a little bit of uh, French Emmental to the top of this, because I'm here in France and Emmental is cheap. So there's my Parmesan. The recipe calls for two cups full of cheese. That's too expensive for me. So there we go. Like I said, I'm going to let this cool and then later I'll add in the eggs. I'm always relieved when that works. There we go. So there is my lovely, thick, silky sauce. Oh, it's delicious. You can see the consistency of it. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I would say about, peep, 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 that's my cooker making that noise, I'm sorry. I'm going to add a few tablespoons of this. That's it. The rest, I'm going to keep to go on top. So there we go. It's about half a cup of sauce there. If you have plenty of cheese, you could add cheese in now. I don't, and it's too expensive. And this is my budget version of this. And next, I'm going to put my meat layer on top of my vegetables. So I have my potatoes, I have my aubergines, I have my meat layer, and finally, over the top, we're going to put our creamy bechamel sauce layer. And it always surprises me how thick this layer is. I'm just gonna scrape out my dish. There it is, I'm gonna scrape it all out. Don't waste any. And last of all, I'm going to give it a good sprinkle of lower cost Emmental cheese. I keep touching my cooker and it keeps going beep. Only else it's got an angry induction hob that beeps at you all the time. There we go. That's enough, otherwise it gets too expensive. I'm now gonna put this in the oven at 180 centigrade, which I believe is about 365 Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna put it in there for 40 minutes. It always looks darker on camera than it actually is. It's just a a nice brown. I can only think about the uh, content of the milk maybe. It's a bit high in uh, carbs and it browns like that. Anyway, that now needs to sit there. The recipe says for one hour before I eat it. I don't want it to be cold, but I'll see how we go. And I'm gonna serve it with salad. And I've easily got six portions here. There is the finished 
Moussaka. It's funny, if I wiggle the plate, it kind of got a, it's kind of got a wiggle to it. It's got a cassette, bechamel custard on top. It's really good. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in here. In case you do this, you think, oh, what's all that? It kind of makes like a, a sauce and a gravy. And I think that'll be good. Poured on top of the salad. That's what I'm gonna do with mine. So there we go, my thrifty, way cheaper version. I only put in a quarter of the cheese, I only put in half the eggs, I only put in half the meat, and I've already tasted this. It doesn't taste frugal. So I'm gonna go and eat my dinner. We hope that you enjoyed that and if you did go on like comment and subscribe now tell me do you cook with aubergines and if so what do you make with it because i think they are absolutely superb and my reaction in the past that they were a bit mm, i take it all back they are really lovely in moussaka and i think i'm going to be adding moussaka very regularly to my repertoire because it makes that tiny little thin layer of meat go a very very long way just leaves me to say thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now.